Well, what an education we've had this evening, which is a wonderful one. Um, I don't know about you, but I have learnt so much this evening. You think you've just been sitting there listening. While you've been sitting there listening, your brain has been really stimulated. And that in turn contributes to what's called cognitive reserve. I'm going to talk a little bit about that a bit later. Am I speaking into the microphone probably? Okay, so I'm going to talk about how learning a language in the middle years of your life, and you know, you can sort of think about that's between 40, 65, but you don't have to um, cut off at 65, how that benefits the brain and contributes to cognitive health through your older years. Uh, anyone who knows me or meets me knows that I am passionate about keeping the brain healthy and reducing the risk of dementia and that passion was ignited when my own mother developed Alzheimer's disease and she has been living with that for 15 years now. In the process of learning about Alzheimer's disease, I learned that there are things that we can do to reduce our risk of dementia. It's not possible to prevent dementia at this point in time, but research shows that lifestyle contributes significantly to dementia <coughs> risk. So this evening I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey which ties in nicely with what other people have said earlier this evening. So I don't know about you, but I've got a bucket list. And in case you don't recognise that, that's the city of Florence. Yeah. Top of my bucket list is to go and live in Florence in the Tuscany region for an extended period of time. Let's not put a time limit on that. So I've determined that to do that, I'm going to have to learn Italian, I'm going to have to be physically fit, and I'm going to have to be cognitively healthy to get the most out of that experience. So I'm going to tell you how I'm going to go about this. Now, as I said, research shows that we can, through our lifestyle, reduce our risk of developing dementia or delay the onset of symptoms. So Australia, Alzheimer's Australia developed a program called Your Brain Matters. And we talk about five simple steps to keep your brain healthy as you get older. Now I'm going to talk about mentally stimulating your brain, but it's important to understand that all these steps work in together. So it's important to, as well as keep your brain mentally stimulated, that you also are eating healthily and exercising. All right, so it's been determined that the best activities that you can do for your brain health combine physical activity, a mental workout, and a social component. All right, so I've decided that yes, I've got to learn Italian. I'm going to go and enrol in a language class. Now, I know that there are other ways to do it, but for me, going to a language class will provide me not only with the motivation, you know, Tuesday evening I've got a front up to my Italian class, but also I'm going to get that social interaction. While I'm at my Italian class, I'm going to get an immense mental workout. It's a really good thing to do for your brain. Amongst the activities that are, have been shown to be good for stimulating your brain, music and learning a language come out tops. So, as I said, I'm going to go and find that Italian language class. It's going to have to be a beginner's class, 
the only two words I can remember from my Italian lessons at school were um, not Gemale, which I think means not bad, and buongiorno. I was terrified of the Italian teacher, hardly opened my mouth. Um, so as I said, I'm going to be getting that social activity. I'm going to be getting a fantastic mental um, a mental workout. And as people have said before, it's not... I don't have to master the language. It's going to take time. It's going to be challenging. It's the process. It's actually doing it, making it start. It's never too early or too late to start stimulating your brain. Um, early in the in your you know sort of middle age is an ideal time, but as I said, it's never too early and it's never too late. Um, now, how am I going to incorporate physical activity? Well, what I could do is I could arrange to meet up with one of my classmates and go for a walk. And while we're walking, we can practice our Italian. Or if I haven't got someone to walk with, I could listen to perhaps Andrea Bocelli singing in Italian. Okay? So I can combine physical, mental and social activity for the sake of my brain. Now, I okay, what's happened here. <laughs> no? I want that. Oh, okay. So, that's Leonardo da Vinci. Now, if it's good enough for Leonardo da Vinci to learn a language in his middle age, I think it's good enough for me as well. I discovered that Leonardo da Vinci taught himself Latin at the age of 40. Why? Because the printing press had made classics available in Latin. He wanted to be able to read them, so he, learned him, he taught himself Latin. Now, given the time that he was living, 40 might be considered a bit older than middle age, but it doesn't matter. So, as I said, I thought that uh, that was pretty good, a pretty good uh, reason for me to learn Italian. Um, and, of course, when I get to Florence, I'm going to be seeing some of his work and getting more, uh, getting more mental stimulation. So, now, how is my brain benefiting from all this cognitive, physical and social activity. Well, as somebody, one of the earlier speakers said, it's opening up new perspectives and new ways of thinking. It's creating new, masses of new neural connections in my brain. Now, there's a concept in, in neurology called cognitive reserve. And what that refers to is the amount of connections between brain cells that gives your brain protection. So if it should be attacked by a disease like Alzheimer's, it can compensate for longer for the damage that's occurring. So if some connections are lost or some part of the brain is damaged, it can re-root things. So in, um, what has been shown is that people can delay the onset of symptoms. So they might have a lot of um, Alzheimer's pathology in their brain, but they might not be experiencing symptoms. Um, learning vocabulary is strengthening memory and as I said, reducing the risk of dementia. Research shows that people who are bilingual can re delay the onset of dementia symptoms by up to about five years. So if you know someone who's living with dementia, if you could delay the onset of those symptoms, that will give them another three, five years of good quality life. All right, so I'm going to leave you with this quote from Dr. Ma from Michael Mersini. 
who is a leading researcher around the world in neural plasticity research. You might have heard about the idea that your brain is plastic. No, it's not made of plastic, obviously, but it has that ability to adapt to stimulation. So what he says is that there are a few things uh, that you can do for your brain that are better than learning a language. Learning a second language requires careful listening and a heavy dose of new learning on all levels of perception, memory, cognition and motor control. This is rich food for an old brain. Now, where do I go to sign up for those Italian classes? <laughs> Thank you very much.